where I have mem hey on the base, when in the middle of uh, the question of where the ash, where the fire from the machta um, for the keteres have to come from. Morning. So we learned for the menorah we had from the tamid, and it says that the 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 age tamid, since the near tamid, the the constant candle, which is the menorah, is going to take get its light. It's going to come from the age tamid, from the constant fire, which is the fire that is on the um, on the mizbeach. But what about the fire for the Mashta for um, incense for the for the Kuturis that goes into the Kurdish Akadashim, the Holy Holy Sun in Kippur. And for that, the Gemara said that we're going to say just as the fire by the menorah, um, it says Aish here, it says Aish there, which we saw yesterday. Aish by the Kuturis is because it says that it'll, it'll burn it up into smoke, and so if the smoke is fire, it has to be that there's fire. and. Uh, it says a share, and it says he's there, just as like over there, it's the closest, uh, just like over there, it's uh, from the Mizbech, so too, it's on the Mizbech. Like Mara says, how do you know that? Maybe the idea is that it comes from whatever is closest. Tam so it says, you will take melemachta gach leyesh me ala Mizbech me lefnei Hashem. From, in, from in front of Hashem. Like Mara said, is a Mizbech. Uh, if it's talking about the Mizbeach on the inside, this is the way Rashi explained it. If, say, if we would have been talking about the Mizbeach that's on the inside, on the uh, golden Mizbeach, you can't say from in front of Hashem. That is, the whole Mizbeach is inside the base of Mikdash. That's, that is uh, in front of Hashem. The fact that it needed to say, we'll take it from the part that's on front of Hashem, in front of Hashem, that's referring to the Mizbeach uh, um, where it has an eastern side and a western side, a side that's closer to the Beis HaMikdash and a far, a far, that's farther away from the Beis HaMikdash. And it's also that the Mizbeach on the outside is, is, is uh, in two different tribes, so it has different sides. In any case, We, um, we need uh, the teaching of here to tell us that the Mizbeach, the fire that's going to come for the menorah, and the fire that's going to come for the Keturus, for the uh, that's the incense that's brought in the Fnai, the Lefnim, and the Kedesh Kedashim, they are, come from the outer Mizbeach. The Yitzchak Lemichtav Me'ala Mizbeach, the Yitzchak Lemichtav Me'lefnei and this And the Torah had to say um, on top of the Mizbeach, and um, and that it should be on top, and it should come from Lufnei Hashem, meaning on the Mizbeach, on the western side, which is closest to the Beis HaMikdash. The Ikaz Rachman HaMal Mizbeach, if it just said, on the Mizbeach HaVamina, my Mizbeach Mizbeach HaVamina, if it just said you bring it from the, from the altar, from the Mizbeach, I would have thought it comes from the inner Mizbeach, from the golden Mizbeach, that's small inside the Kurdish, inside the Beis HaMikdash. Because so it says from the part that's in front of Hashem, which tells us that it's the Mizbeach that has part in front of Hashem and part not. Because of Rahmanim Lufne Hashem, and if the Torah had just written that you did that it's in front of Hashem, Hava Amina, Dafkim Lufne Hashem, I would have thought that it has to be uh, um, uh, on the on the western side. Aval Mihaigi so mehaigi se malut. Um uh the other side of the door would not be good, even meaning the it has to be directly in front of Hashem and not the southern side of the Mizbeach. Because the southern side of the Mizbeach, even though that's west, it, it, it is actually all, um, not in, directly in front of the door. So perhaps it's no good if it's not directly in front of the door. And that's why I have to say, Mi'al Mizbeach, on top of Mizbeach, as long as it is the western side of the Mizbeach, that's fine. Amar Rabbi 
And now we're on Memvavim and Aleph at the top, but it's the 46A at the top. Amar Abelazim Meshub HaKapara. Abelazim said in the name of HaKapara. Oymer Hoye Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir would say, Eivare Oyla Hashem Yitoisru, Oysa Lehem Arachah Bifni Atzma. The leftover meat, for the leftover parts from the carbon animal that will put on them as bath uh, to burn, and they're left over. You put them on their own fire in, 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 to to uh, burn um, uh, in order to continue their their uh, their con- their uh, being burned up, uh, being consumed by the fires on the top of the staff. The soydra, and he would set it up there. I feel the bashavas and even ocean. So. In our Mishnah, we saw that there was a machlokas of how many fires are needed on the Mizbeah. How many fires were made? We know the daily, the main fire, the Marofa We had the secondary fire for which, from which the coals were taken to make the incense. And um, we saw one opinion that there's a, a, a third fire, which is to, to like a pilot light, which, which is to make sure that the fire remains a, a light. And on Yom Kippur, we saw another fire which we talked about, that this idea that and everybody agreed that on Yom Kippur there's a separate fire in order to take coals from on top of the Mizbeach in order to burn the incense of Kedosh Kedosh. I mean, that we saw in the Mishnah, Rabbi Meir is of the opinion that, that um, there's a, a, um, a st- separate fire made for whatever is left over and didn't get consumed by the fire the night before from the Karbanas of the previous day, we're going to set it up and we're going to put it onto that fire, that separate fire, in order for it to burn, to continue burning. Now, so which day's carbon is it? It's not today's carbon. It's yesterday's carbon, right? It's what was brought yesterday and left over and, and remained um, in, intact and didn't get consumed yesterday. So that we're going to set up a fire today in order to burn it. Now, on, on, on the Shabbos, Normally we say on Shabbos, you can, you can bring a carbon on Shabbos if, if it's a communal carbon, not a personal carbon, and if it is, today's the day, right? It, it, it's, the, it's the time that you have to bring it, so of course you're gonna bring the carbon today. It's, it, 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 today is the, the, uh, uh, the proper time. However, if this is Friday's carbon, Rabbi Meir is telling us a chiddush here. That even though this carbon is Friday's carbon, it's not today's carbon. Because it was brought on Friday, you put it on the fire on Friday, and it remained overnight and didn't get consumed by the fire. A mayor says, set up another fire on the Mizbeach and burn it on Shabbos. Even though you can't make a fire on Shabbos, you can't burn something on Shabbos. No, this is the mitzvah, and so you can do that. So that's the finish of the Shabbos. And when it says, my um, what, what, what is the first part? Now, we get that there's a big tradition in the second part where it says you could do it even in Shabbos. But the first part, he said, you know, Rabbi Lazar said in the name of our Kapara that, you may, that Rabbi Meir says that leftover parts of the carbon, you're going to make a, 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 a special fire for them. Yeah, of course, that, that's what we learned in our mission. You're going to make a special fire for them. That, uh, that, that is the mitzvah. My Kamashma, Tanina. We learned that. Our Mishnah said that according to Rabbi Meir, every day there were four fires, four pyres set alight on the Mizbeach for the for the various things that we just mentioned, why there should be four. According to Rabbi Meir. I'm Rabbi Avalan, it's a little absurd. So the idea is that even parts of the carbon that were not supposed to go on the Mizbeach, they're puzzled, they're invalid. And they should never have gone on top of the Mizbeach. Nevertheless, once they're up there, uh, the, there are some sulim that im alu yarvi. If even if you put it up there, since they're not meant to be there, you have to take them down. Is, there are some sulim, some invalidations like that. And then there are some things that are possible that im alu layer. That if it went up, it should not be brought down. Once it went on the Mizbeach, the Mizbeach absorbed it as a Kaddish, it's Kedusha, 
and it becomes a part of the Mizbeach and, rem and must remain on there. And, and, and now I think, okay, fine, that's once it's on the fire. But whatever got burned up, got burned up. I'm not going to make a new fire for, for that. No. Even if the part that remains comes from a carbon that's puzzled, that should never have gone on the Mizbeach. Now that it's there, it remains on the Mizbeach and all the layer do for that. That also is going to set a fire on uh, um, a fourth fire. The davka shemashlo behenapur, and also it has to be uh, that the fire had singed it, had caught it, not, not singed it, had caught. So the that that part of the animal had begun to to uh, burn, because then the mizbeach now absorbs it as as kaddish, as sanctified, and a part of the mizbeach. Or the part of the fuel of the mizbeach. But if the fire did not consume it, it didn't actually read it, uh, uh, light it. Light, then you do not set up another fire for it, and it's not considered having it been absorbed or having been come sanctified and a part of the mizbeach. Ikeda amri etak sheir mechabsulim. There are those who say, no, the Kiddush over here is regardless of whether it's kosher or postal, meaning whether it was a valid or invalid carbon, and whether it's supposed to go on the Mizbeach or not. Even non, uh, uh, even properly sanctified things, you don't, um, you don't set up this, the, the second fire for consuming the rest of it if the fire never um, caught, uh, um, it never caught fire. At that point, essentially, um, uh, 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 you're not going to light a fire on Shabbos for them because it never was. It's uh, it, it never was carbon. Um, it, yeah. So the I um, the the mizbeach absorbs or, or makes something sanctified and becomes a part of the mizbeach, and now it remains there and it has to be fully consumed. And you have to complete the mitzvah once it already began to burn on the day that it was properly in its day. The Gemara says, Vafilo Shabbos, Vafilo Shabbos And it has to be Tanina, uh, Yom um, So we know that even on Shabbos, you have to have this uh, fire. How do we know that? Because in our Mishnah it said that everybody added one extra for for uh, Yom Kippur. So in the first opinion that there's just two fires, one for everything that needs to burn, and one for the uh, for the coals for the, for the incense for the daily katoras. So you can have a third for one for Yom Kippur. Obviously that'll be a third one. And the same in the opinion of Rabbi Yosi that you're going to have a separate fire to uh, to keep it alight. So there's usually going to be three rather than be four. However, according to Rabbi Meir, he says normally there are four. What's the fourth one for? To to uh, to burn whatever's left over, right? Now, on, and then he says there's a fifth for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is like Shabbos. You're not allowed to light a fire in Yom Kippur for no reason, right? It, there has to you can't just light a fire. Uh, it has to be either that there's a mitzvah to light the fire, like in the Mizbeach. Um, or it's a, a or, or it's a danger, right? But you can't. The Torah prohibition of lighting a fire on Shabbos applies on Yom Kippur as well. So Yom Kippur, like Shabbos, you can't just light a fire. And yet, he, Rabbi Meir says that there are five on Yom Kippur. Five on Yom Kippur means that there's a special one for Yom Kippur, the three of every day, and also the one of lighting the fire, of of burning up the 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 leftover carbonus of the other day. Which means that even on Shabbos, even on Yom Kippur, you're going to set up a new fire. Not for today's carbon, which that you would do, because that's today's missile. But you would set up a fire on Yom Kippur for yesterday's carbon, for the leftovers that didn't fully get consumed. So, yeah, our mission is pretty clear that just like uh, 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 every day, you, burn, you make an extra fire in order to to um, consume the leftovers, so too on Yom Kippur. 
because he, otherwise Yom Kippur would also only be four. If you didn't make the special fire on Shabbos and Yom Kippur, so then he would have daily, he would have four. On Shabbos, he would have three. And on Yom Kippur, he would have four again because of the special one for the incense for the Keturus of the Lufnaim Lufnaim that goes in the Holy Holies. But the part that you burn up every day's leftovers, the, the previous day's leftovers, that would, you wouldn't set up on Shabbos and Yom Kippur. And yet our Mishnah said that you're going to set up five, according to Rabbi Meir, which tells us that there is a, uh, that even on Yom Kippur, you set up this fire for the, the, uh, um, for the leftovers from the day, from the previous day. But isn't there always leftover coals from the you know, previous night or whatever? that they used to start the fire. It's not like they're starting a fire new from scratch. Yeah, and therefore what's, you're asking about what? So it's not actually- That's correct. And I mean, it's not starting a new fire technically, is it? Well, that would be true for Yantif. On Yantif, you're not supposed to start a new fire. You have to make a fire from another fire. But on Yom Kippur and on Shabbos, you can't even add a toothpick to a fire. You can't do anything to add to fire right so it's not just starting a fire it's it's even uh, uh, extending a fire adding to a fire um, fanning a flame can't do anything on shop uh, on shabbos and, and yom kippur yantiv where the torah says uh, that you're allowed to cook so you're allowed to make a fire for cooking so you're allowed to once you have a fire already you can add to it that 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 is correct but on shabbos that, that wouldn't make a difference on yom kippur it wouldn't make a difference you can't and make a fire, um, new or old, on uh, uh, on Shabbos, unless it's the obligation. And the uh, what Rabbi Meir essentially is saying is that there's an obligation to make a fire for yesterday's carbon. That's the finish. That's this this new idea. I'm going to back up Rabbi says, yeah, I needed to tell you this. I may have thought, well, I can think of a time where on Yom Kippur, you have to make a fire for yesterday's carbon. When Yom Kippur is on Sunday. Now, in our calendar, that never happened. The, the calendar was set in such a way that Yom Kippur is never on, on a Sunday because, because of the burden of having two days that you cannot cook back to back. Um, uh, Yantif, when we have two days, or when you have a Yantif right after Shabbos, or Shabbos right after Yantif, you're allowed to cook on the Shabbat, on the Yantif. You just can't cook on the Shabbos. But if Yom Kippur is immediately after Shabbos, so then you have two days. Uh, so we don't have, uh, um, Roshana, we'll, when we learn these things, we'll, we'll, we don't have a system of, of uh, uh, in, our, in our set calendar, we don't have Yom Kippur right after Shabbos. But when the calendar was set by by witnesses seeing the new moon when it's done properly, right? So then you actually, uh, Yom Kippur can come and can happen on any day of the week. And so if Yom Kippur is immediately after Shabbos, right? So the Shabbos carbon is going to have to be burned that night after Shabbos. That, uh, and that is Yom Kippur. So of course, we'd say, oh, maybe the reason why on Yom Kippur you make a fire, it's talking about Yom Kippur that comes immediately after Shabbos, and that's why you're making a fire for yesterday's karma. But not if it was a weekday. If it was a weekday, you have to do it before Yom Kippur. The Chelbe Shabbos, and the reason why it would be different is the Chelbe Shabbos, because the fats of Shabbos, the parts of the, the carbon that go on the Mizbeach of Shabbos, created me Yom Kippur. They can be brought on Yom Kippur. Abel Be'emtza Shabbos. But in the middle of the week, like, then you would, if you, you wouldn't make a fire on Yom Kippur for yesterday's karma. Kamashmalan, that's why this teaches that Kamashmalan, uh, um, that's why this it teaches us that even on a regular Shabbos, um, he said that you would burn yesterday's carbon on a special fire. Amar Rav, so Rav said, Man hai de lechayesh lekimche, who's, uh, it, uh, it's, um, uh, Essentially, who, who's not being careful with what he says? Literally, it means who's not who's not uh, 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 taking care of his of his um, flour. Who's not careful what he's grinding? Uh, in other words, what what are your teeth grinding up there? What are you, what words are you saying? 
right? Who's not being careful? In other words, uh, uh, it's it's uh, uh, this answer doesn't really fit. Check the wording of the Mishnah. He says the Mishnah says a bechol It says in our Mishnah every day he would he would make a separate fire, not only on weekday, not only on Shabbos, not only on Yom Kippur that came uh, uh, after uh, uh, after Shabbos. Rabbi Meir said every day these were the five four fires that were put on, right? And he's, so, so this answer that, oh, I would have thought the Mishnah was talking about uh, only weekdays, not on Shabbos, that doesn't fit. Of the Chol Yemtunah. Tashi. So indeed, we have a question. Why do we have to say this new idea, Rabbi Loza said in the name of Kapara, that Rabbi Meir says that even on Shabbos, he would light the fire. Uh, it, our Mishnah already said that on Yom Kippur. So, so, so this is a, a, you know, a, a, Unnecessary teaching. Okay. Now the Gemara is going to look for a source and understand what this idea is that you can do it on Shabbos. So the first thing the Gemara said that this Rabbi Lazo said that even on Shabbos you do this um, is is in disagreement with Rabbi Huna. The Amar because he said he lost it. He said it it uh, pushes away uh, um, Shabbos, the, the, the daily carbon, the tumet, that needs to come daily. Hilasa, it start seifer, it will supersede or push away the prohibitions, but not the seifer and but the end um, does not. So the beginning meaning the shechdim and um, uh, the bringing the parts of the Mizbeach, of course. But the end, meaning yesterday's carbon, which was already shechted on Friday, and put on the Mizbeach on Friday, and now you need, what's the end? The burning up of the parts on the Mizbeach, that does not supersede. But what, what's missing in the text here is Deicha <coughs> what? Supersede what? We're assuming Shabbos. But it doesn't say that. He says, the beginning supersedes, Meaning the obligation of shechting the carbon and 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 uh, um, bringing the spritz in the blood and putting its parts on the mizbeach, the beginning, the, the first parts of the carbon, that supersedes. And in brackets, we'll assume for a moment, supersede Shabbos. That even though that Shabbos is a prohibition of, of shechting, Shabbos is a prohibition of, of burning, you can shech this animal because it's a daily tummy and bring it up on the mizbeach and burn it. However, the end does not supersede. Again, he doesn't say supersede what? Let's imagine for a moment he's talking about Shabbos. So the end does not supersede Shabbos. So if you had a carbon that was already shechted, meaning Friday's carbon, and already brought a, a, a spritzed the blood, and now you want to burn its parts on the Mizbeah on Shabbos, you can't make a fire for that. You can't burn that because that today is Shabbos, and this is yesterday's carbon. So the end does not supersede. So seemingly, he, this disagrees with Rabbi Elazar, who just said that it does supersede Shabbos. Gufa Amar Avuna. So now let's analyze the statement. Amar Avuna, Tamid Chilasi Dechas The beginning, the initial obligations, the shechting and the spritz of the blood and putting on the mizbeach, those supersede. Uh, the end, the burning up of the mizbeach, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the carbon, the rest of it that burns on the mizbeach, does not supersede. What does it not supersede? So Rav Chista Amar, What it's talking about is that it supersedes Shabbos. But it does not supersede, it doesn't supersede Tuma. That um, the, uh, the burning up of the Mizbeah will not supersede uh, Tuma. That even though we said as a, as a communal carbon. Uh, that uh, an obligation, a communal obligation, will supersede um, uh, will, a tumor, tumor, uh, a carbon, a, a communal carbon is allowed to be brought even if there's tumor. So the carbon is tummy, the carbon is tummy, and there's no other option than you can bring a carbon, you can bring the carbon into tumor. That's to spritz the blood. Because spritzing of the blood is necessary in order to validate the carbon. But burning it up on the mizbeach, not necessary. So uh, even though it's mitzvah, it's supposed to be done, it, it, but the carbon has already uh, atoned, as it were. It did. It, it, it spritz. You spritz the blood. 
So therefore, we're not going to uh, uh, the, the, the it's not going to supersede the prohibition of doing it in tumah. Rabbi Omar Rabbi says, "Doicha tumah veira doicha sashatz." This is the other way around. Um, the um, the uh, uh, carbon, the daily carbon, will supersede tumah, but will not supersede Shabbos. You cannot burn up yesterday's carbon. Uh, uh, on Shabbos, um, because that was yesterday, and the carbon was already brought, and the blood was spritzed. And now you want to burn it up Friday night, overnight, yesterday's carbon, you can't do it. I have a question on you, who says that it doesn't supersede Shabbos. And I have a question on Rav Christa, who says it doesn't supersede Tuma, but it does supersede Shabbos. Here's my question. Maishna Tuma. Why is it that by Tuma you understand, you accept that that uh, um, the the uh, Tuma is going to that uh, in not only the spritzing of the blood, but even the burning up of the parts on the Mizbeach are also allowed, even though it's coming, since since the, it's a communal carbon and Tuma butcher bit So you're allowed to bring it. So what's the reason? Because it says, It says that my daily karma, uh, you be careful to bring it in its time. Every single day you have to bring it. And, and it means even if you are tummy and the karma is tummy and there's no other way of bringing it, you're going to have to bring it because tuma, uh, uh, communal karma, is, uh, you bring in tuma. Well, Shabbos Nami. Well, then Shabbos, I can say the same thing. But my other, I feel like Shabbos. In its proper time, even if it's Shabbos, you have to bring it. Well, Rav Chista Kashim had a question according to Rav Chista as well. Maishna Shabbos, why does he say that Shabbos uh, supersedes? And you can bring it on Shabbos, but you can't bring it on uh, uh, in Tuma. Same reason. It says that the karma must be brought at its proper time. Now, feel it Shabbos. Even on Shabbos, you bring the karma, and even though it's yesterday's karma, Friday afternoon's karma, and you didn't get to burn it, so now's the time to burn it. Today is the only day you can do this. So go ahead and do it. So the same should be, it should be permissible for Tuma. In other words, the basis is from the Torah saying, bring it in its proper time. In its appointed time. And well, then that should be true both for when it, whether it's Tuma or not, or whether it is, um, whether it is uh, uh, on Shabbos or not. And he said, I'm a lay lily to be cash or of Christa cash. It's not a difficulty for me, and it's not a difficulty for Rokhista, even though that Rokhista was is uh was disagreed with him. And he, I, he nevertheless, obviously seeking the truth, would explain the, the opinion of his opponent as well. Like Kasha, so if I keep the lesson, so the did like Kasha, it's not a question to me. So if I keep the lesson, the end is like the beginning. Um, so always the, the end is like the beginning. The end meaning the burning of parts on the Mizbeach is going to be the same rule as the beginning, which is the shechting and the spritzing of the blood. Now we go to Memvama with base. Tuma the trilase bar mitri. The beginning, the spritzing of the blood, right? If there's no coin but someone that's tummy to spritz the blood. So then the coin is going to spritz the blood, even though that it's tummy. Why? Because uh, uh, um, that's the mitzvah. The mitzvah is that the carbon has to be shafted, the blood has to be spritzed, and it has to be burned on the staff. So just like the beginning can be done, in, even though it's in tumma, uh, uh, in bar mitzvah tumma, so it supersedes tumma. So if anami, dachi. So therefore, the end part also, the burning up on the mitzvah, is also going to supersede tumma, because the beginning uh, it, it could supersede Tum. However, Shabbos, the about Mitri, Shabbos. But in this carbon, which day is this carbon meant to be brought? This carbon is, is, is Friday's carbon, right? Every day there's a morning carbon, afternoon carbon. So let's say this is the Friday afternoon carbon. It's a short Friday. They, they shechted the carbon, they spritz the blood. But in the meantime, while they're um, skinning it and cutting the parts and bringing it up in the back, they didn't get to burn it. Before Shabbos set in, so the who, which day or it started on, on, on and, and they didn't complete it. 
So which day's carbon is this? This is Friday's carbon, Friday afternoon. Can you bring this Friday afternoon carbon on Shabbos? Can you shecht it on Shabbos? No, it's Friday's carbon. It's not Shabbos's carbon. You can't, it's not, you can't shecht it on, on, on Shabbos. So if I can't shecht it and spritz the blood on Shabbos, so then I can't do the end either on Shabbos because it's all one entity. The end is like the beginning. If the beginning can't be done on Shabbos, and this is Friday's carbon, so you can't do it on Shabbos, so too the end cannot be done on Shabbos. Now, Rashi points out that the blood, the spritzing of the blood, actually is not a total prohibition. Spritzing blood, so what's the problem? Why can't it be done on Shabbos? The reason is because once the sun sets and Friday is over, so it's not its time anymore. You can't spritz Friday carbon's blood because it became invalidated once the sun set and as, as the day is over, that day is done. But the, the idea is that uh, Rabbi says, according to him, the reason why Tuma uh, can supersede Shabbos for the, for the end, sorry, the, the carbon can supersede Tuma for the end part, for, even for the burning night. That burning and parts on his back, even if the kind is coming, he can do it. Whereas a Shabbos will not be superseded for the end part. That's because the beginning can't supersede Shabbos because it's a Friday carbon. Whereas the beginning can't supersede Tumas, so it can supersede the end as well. And the Rav Chistan Nami, Seven Nami the Rav Chistan Leikasha, and also it's not a question of the Rav Chistan. Why? So if it did he goes the other way around. He said the end is like the beginning um, and uh, at the beginning, uh, Leslie Shabbos, uh, the he doesn't um, he's not concerned of of uh, of Shabbos. The uh, the Hutra he mitzvah. Um, the the and this takes us to the, the conversation we had many times already on Sachim and and other. There are two concepts in in the uh, in a carbon that's tame that's being brought or really many mitzvahs that when we have one supersede the other. There is a hutra and a dechuyim. Hutra's concept is the prohibition does not apply in this scenario. It is totally permissible, and therefore you don't have to try to avoid it. it it's just not a prohibition in this case. So, um, for instance, in this case, let's say Shabbos, it, it says a communal carbon is... It is Shabbos is hutra. It's permissible. It's not like you're breaking Shabbos, but there's a mitzvah to break Shabbos. You have to break Shabbos. No, you're not breaking Shabbos. You're not breaking Shabbos because that's not included in the prohibition at all. It's hutra. It's permissible. And therefore, if a communal carbon is permissible, who cares the beginning? Who cares the end? It's permissible. It's communal carbon. Communal carbon, when the Torah said, don't light a fire, don't ignite a fire, it did not include communal Carbonus. That's not included in the prohibition. You don't need a special exemption. It's not a, 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 a it's not overriding the prohibition. There is no prohibition. That's what hutra means. However, there's another concept called dechuya. Dechuya means uh, it, it supersedes. Superseding means the prohibition's in place, but there's a greater obligation which will supersede the prohibition. So when somebody's ill on Shabbos, it doesn't mean that um, you're, you're allowed to just do whatever you want, right? It's the prohibitions all are still intact and in place. However, for the sake of life, that supersedes the prohibition, but the prohibition is still there. And so if you can avoid something, then you, do, you would avoid it. You don't, it, it, it's not, uh, uh, it, it, you know, if there's another way of doing it, you can have a non-Jew do it. So have the non-Jew do it, rather, because uh, you can avoid it. Now, that's not always the case. I'm not re- uh, talking about uh, the, the laws of Shabbos uh, in regards to somebody that's ill right now. Just the concept. The concept of if something were to be the huya, just set aside, meaning the prohibition is still there, just the, uh, the obligation supersedes. So then the prohibition is still there. We can avoid it if we can. So what the Gemara is saying about Rav Christa is that Shabbos, is completely permissible in regards to a communal carbon. So who cares if it was yesterday's carbon or not? Uh, the, the idea is that it's a permissible act in regards to a communal carbon. Who, the end, the beginning, it's all the same. 
the Shabbat, the, the Hutra Hibetzibur, it is completely permissible in a communal setting. And therefore, the end also is going to be permissible. And even though it's yesterday's carbon, yes, but it's yesterday's daily carbon, communal daily carbon. It's a communal carbon that, ha- that supersedes Shabbos. And not supersedes Shabbos. That there's no Shabbos prohibitions about. So I can burn the carbon. Who cares? When you say, wait, but it's not today's carbon. It's yesterday's carbon. Right. But it's, there is no prohibition around this because it's a, it's a communal carbon. However, Tumla did the Khuyevitsibur. However, by Tuma, he says Tuma is not permissible. Tuma is a Dhuya. Of course, we try to avoid Tuma. If there's another coin that could do it, we're gonna say you can't do you can't have the tummy coin do it. It's only if there's no other choice. It's a communal carbon that whose time is today. And the only carbon uh, available, the only coin available is a tame coin. So we're gonna so it's permissible. Permissible. Uh, in the sense of that, it that even though the prohibition is intact, we're going to allow whatever is necessary to be done. Okay, so that would be fine for the beginning and for the spritzing of the blood, because that is what's the minimum necessary for the government. The burning the parts of them is bad. That's not minimally necessary. That is an additional mitzvah. That's not going to supersede that uh, the the the. the Intact prohibition of doing uh, anything in Torah. That's the concept of Duchuy. Trilase the Iker Kapara, and therefore the beginning part, the shechting and the spritzing of blood, which are the primary uh, functions of the atonement. That's going to supersede. Um, the, the obligation will supersede the prohibition, intact prohibition of Tumah. Seifrei the Lavik and Kapara, but the end part, which is not the main part of the atonement, Loi Dachi will not supersede uh, the, uh, the Tumah. The Lavik and Kapara, Loi Dachi will not supersede. And so you can't burn the parts on the Mizbeach if Tumah Itma. So it, it was said. Hamachame Eish Machte Omenoi. Uh, somebody who extinguishes the fire from the pan or the manoga. What's the The Torah had said, and we saw that the fire in the Gemara, that the fire that lights the manoga and the fire that lights the, that's the coals, that lights the incense, comes from on top of the Mizbeach. Now, in regards to the fire that's on top of the Mizbeach, the Torah says that it shall be a, a constant fire, and you may not extinguish it. Now, you take some of that fire that may not be extinguished, and you light the manoga with it. You take some fire that may not be extinguished and you put it in a pan uh, for the incense. Are you allowed to extinguish that fire? Can you extinguish the menorah fire because it comes from the mizbeach? On the mizbeach, you're not allowed to extinguish it. And this comes from that. So Abaya Abaya says if you if you extinguish that, that that you you transgress and you're held liable for the prohibition of not extinguishing the fire. Rabbi Amapata Rabbi says no. That's going to be exempt. Why the kviya b'reish minisham is beach? That because the the lighting the the extinguishing the fire on top of them is beach. Kule ama leib bligi the chai. Everybody agree that's a Torah prohibition, and and you chai be held liable if you're going to extinguish the fire on top of them is beach. So he bligi where's the machlek is the achte ha'ar. Once you've taken it off the top of them is beach and you brought it to down to to in a pan to for the incense um, to light the menorah. And then you extinguished it down there. Abaya says, no, nevertheless, you held liable. This is fire of the altar, of the Mizbeach. Rav Amon Potter, Rav says, you're exempt. Kibin the Natke, Natka, Natka. Once you've removed it from the Mizbeach, you've removed it from this prohibition of not extinguishing it. Ela, Adam, or Nachman, or Rabbi, or Rabbi, or Amir, or Yechelas, or Gavim, or Mizbeach, or what about what Rav Nachman said in the name of Rabbi Rabuah that somebody takes a coal off of the mizbeach and extinguishes it? Is chayiv? Command kabaya. This must be the opinion of Abaya that says that even if you remove it from the mizbeach, you're going to uh, be held liable for extinguishing. Gemara says apilatei No, we can even say this opinion follows the opinion of Rav, who says that once you've removed it from the mizbeach, you removed it from the prohibition of extinguishing. But Rav is, the explanation of Rav is this, that 
uh, you you had a mitzvah to remove it from the mizbeach, and you wait. So your removal of the mizbeach now has a function. It's no longer the altar's mizbeach, uh, uh, fire. Now it's removed for the for the menorah. So now it's the menorah's fire. It was removed for the incense. It's no longer the altar's fire. It's now for its mitzvah. It's now the incense's fire. So you nitka when you remove it for a mitzvah. Now that it is no longer the fire that's on the altar. It's the fire of the incense, the fire of the menorah, because the removal gives it a new function. But if you took it off without any function, you just took a coal off of the mizbeach. Obviously, not allowed to do that. You took it off the mizbeach for no reason. That 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 didn't remove it from the mizbeach because you didn't it, it, you didn't give it any new mitzvah. So it has to be nitka the mitzvah. So it has to be that it was uh, it was. Um, the, uh, uh, taken off of the mizbeach for a mitzvah onto a mitzvah function. It doesn't say No, you just took it to the ground and 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 and, and, and extinguish it. Everybody's going to agree you're exempt. He pleaded the kavi brush mizbeach. The question is only that you extinguished it while it's still on top of the mizbeach. Abaya machayev eisham mizbeach. Abaya says you're held liable. Um, once you pick it, uh, even though you picked it up and you put it in the pan, you picked it up in your, in your tongs and you're bringing it to the menorah, nevertheless, um, it's still on top of the mizbeach. So you're going to be held liable because you're extinguishing the fire on top of the mizbeach. Eish mizbeach would still fire on the mizbeach. Rav Amar Pater, Rav says you're going to be exempt even if you're on top of the mizbeach. They keep it the natka since you picked it up with the intent of a go to a mitzvah. And it's a mitzvah, right? So you, you picked it up, even though you're standing on top of the mizbeach, it's on the mizbeach. You put it in that shovel, you picked it up in the tongs, not cut, you removed it from the mizbeach, and the prohibition of extinguishing it is removed. What about the statement of Rabbi Barabuah? What about if you removed it, he says, even on the floor of the Azara Yechai, the man the lake Abay, the lake Arab, it would be nobody's opinion. He says, no. Again, we say the same idea. If you're removing it with the intent of it going to a mitzvah, so now it's got a new function. So there, there's no prohibition of extinguishing it once you, according to Rava, Rava once you pick it up, according to Abayi, once you take, bring it down from this band. But if you just removed it for no reason, even if it's on the floor of the Yazara, there's a prohibition of extinguishing it. With this, we complete the fourth chapter, fourth parak, Tarif Bakalfi. And uh, Be'ez Hashem, we will come back to you. And tomorrow morning, Be'ez Hashem, we'll begin Be'etzila, the next parak of uh, the, the incense in the Torah.